Yeah, we're going to get to some ice cream for breakfast in just a yes. moment because that is the breakfast of champions, <laughs> of course. But uh, speaking of champions, we are the NBA champs still. We're talking about the Toronto Raptors, and we're seeing everything being kind of shaken up a little bit in the NBA, the NHL, and in the entire sports world. And that's been going on not just with the pandemic, but with the racial injustices going on in the world as well. So to tell us more about it, we got Sportsnet's Arash Madani joining us this morning. Good morning, Arash, and uh, weird breakfast things that you've had. We're talking about some strange foods here. Oh, do we have a rash? Don't know if we have a rash right now. But he did write an article about the Montreal Alouettes and what some of the staff there have had to endure throughout their football careers, including Vernon Adams, uh, Enik Mwamba, and Kahari Jones. And Arash, you're with us right now. Can you tell us more about that article, dude? Yeah, well, Devo, good morning to you. It's been interesting in the aftermath of George Floyd's death, just, you know, all those organizations that have posted those black squares on Instagram and Twitter, they made a commitment to being part of a solution. And what the Alouettes did is Vernon Adams is their franchise quarterback, American. Enoch Mwamba is a Canadian linebacker who speaks French. He was born in the, Demo in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And Kahari Jones, their coach, one of the most prolific quarterbacks in CFL history. And while he was throwing for 5,000 yards in 2001, 2002 in Winnipeg, he was getting death threats because he was in an interracial marriage. And what those three did was they just talked about their experiences. They talked about what they've been through. A guy like Vernon, when he was in college, going to visit a friend and friend's grandfather just walked out of the house said I'm not going to support you you know trying to happen to be a white female I I, I I don't support you being you know being involved in this and so it, it created a broader understanding there was a Q&A afterwards and what we're seeing Devo is that in the early stages pro sports organizations want to have with their staff who may not otherwise know some of the experiences others are sharing what they've been through and that provides a greater understanding. We're in the very early stages, but at least some things are happening right now. And, and that's the big thing is some things are happening. That change needs to happen. And these are just a few stories of so many that these athletes could be telling us. And we got a race coming up in Formula One this weekend. Lewis Hamilton, of course, going to be part of that. What do we expect to see there uh, with not just him, but with other drivers? I think there's going to be a, a demonstration of some kind that is going to be shown. And just yesterday we saw with, you know, as, as we look around sports, the NFL has said that their anthem may be different on week one. Uh, the NBA has said we're going to have players, they're going to be allowed, uh, should this Orlando thing get off the ground, Devo, that they're going to have uh, social justice messages will be permitted on the back of their jerseys, not just their names. So these are all great and these are all initial steps these are all first steps but actionable change takes time and actionable change requires a want to by formula one by the nba by owners of these organizations and they say they're committed to it and devo the hope now is that all those organizations that pledge that they want to be part of the solution when the athletes uh, ask them to hold up to their end of the bargain, the message doesn't get twisted as to the why that is going to happen. And do you think you sometimes, think so. not just the pressure from the athletes, but from sponsors, when money is involved, that change is definitely going to be able to happen because we see something like the Washington Redskins and FedEx saying, hey, we don't like this anymore. But the owners always stuck. Because it's not the first time we're hearing about this franchise uh, and people asking for that name to be changed. Uh, does you, do you think this time it could actually happen? I do, uh, and it's not just FedEx. Nike has pledged its support towards yeah. it. Six uh, organizations with an equity of $620 billion, billion with a B, have supported the Washington Football Club removing its racist moniker, a, a deplorable moniker. And their owner, their tone-deaf owner, Dan Snyder, has been defiant against it. But it, Devo, man, I don't know about you, but it feels like this is actually now gaining a lot of steam and legit steam. And then, you know, if something were to happen with the Washington Football Club, you have to wonder what Cleveland and Atlanta in baseball, what Kansas City in football, what, what happens with, with those names. Look, yeah. Rome was built in a day. This is not just an instant coffee solution where you snap your fingers and something's gonna happen. But slowly, surely, 
they continue to plug away and chip away at making this actionable change. And that is another example. And when corporate America, when these organizations worth tens and hundreds of billions of dollars step in and say, no, no, this isn't going to cut it anymore, that's when progress it's it. We got to wrap up, Arash, but uh, real quick here, Blue Jays, they're flying home this weekend, uh, training at the Rogers Center. Your thoughts, what is happening going forward that you've heard? Well, they're going to do their training camp here for the next three weeks. They're not going to have any exhibition games against another opponent, just intra-squad games. Mark Shapiro and the Blue Jays, the, the team president, hoping to have home games here throughout the regular season. They're continuing to work with the federal government and local health authorities to make that happen. They're going to make the hotel and the stadium effectively a bubble, uh, that nobody's going to leave that area. So for now, the training camp is a go, and they're hoping to get the 30 games here uh, when the regular season rolls around in August and September. So it's, it's a wait-and-see deal like so much with this virus is. It is, it is. Arash Madani from Sportsnet, thank you so much for the information and always uh, keeping on top of things in the sports world. We appreciate you, man. Have a great weekend. Right now, we're going to send things over to Nicole.